on this pre-recorded 4th of July worship service and we thank you for your presence this morning and all the blessings that God has bestowed upon each one of us. What a blessing as I hope many of you have taken the time to be with family and friends to enjoy parades and just reflect on the freedoms that we have as being American citizens. So we are enjoying this opportunity as well, the pastor and Brother Martin, to just get a little downtime and just to relax a little bit, and we'll be back with you in a few days. What's up for a summer journey? Is that what we do for this season? We pack up our things and our families, we jump in the car, and we head off. So the summer of 22 can be the journey of a lifetime, people of God. It can be a journey of exploration and learning and ultimately a journey to discover what is at the heart of our Christian faith. With that, we can pray to the God of liberation and we can say we are gathered this day to meet with you. We ask that you open our hearts to the many ways you will speak to us. As you did with the prophets, you call us out of our everyday lives to share your message of love and grace. Challenge us today to look within ourselves so that we may be your disciples. All are welcome. We invite you to come on this weekend of remembering, this weekend of reflection, this weekend of freedom as we offer all that we have and all that we are back to God to be used by him. Amen. Our call to worship this morning. God calls us to worship today. And we say we are here. All are invited, the sick, the well, the believer, and the doubter. We are here. Wash us, O oh God, may we be cleansed by your holy love. We are here. Amen. Please join me in our prayer of confession and the prayers of the people. God of grace and glory, we confess that we lose sight of our identities, finding our worth in our status, our demographics, and even our location. Oh God, forgive us of our idolatry. Forgive us for placing our worldly identities above your love for us. Forgive us when we get distracted by elaborate rituals holding ourselves superior simply due to our place of birth. You, O oh God, are the source of our identity. You, O oh God, call us to love our neighbor. You, O oh God, challenge us to learn from one another. You, O oh God, tell us to be different. May we swim in your healing waters, resting in the fullness of being children of God. Amen. The Lord who made the heavens and the earth hears our cries, people, and answers our calls. Hope in the Lord whose steadfast love endures with us forever. With that assurance, we can say we are forgiven. Please join us for singing of hymn number, in the faith we sing, 2036, give thanks to God. Amen. Thank you.
Amen. And I apologize for not introducing our wonderful worship team this morning as you've heard the beautiful voice of our angelic brother Dave Burlinson and top side up there to get you our wonderful worship is Mr. Tom Kallenberg and we thank them both for taking the time to get this worship service to us. Our scripture comes from the Old Testament. It's, a, it's one that probably many of you may know. It's, a, it's talking about Naaman. And we're going to read an abbreviated version of 2 Kings, the 5th chapter, 1 through 14. But I invite you to take time to read the entire scripture. Now, Naaman, a commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Armin. The man through a mighty warrior suffered though from leprosy. Mm. Now the Armenians on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Elisha sent a message to, to Naaman and saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became very angry and went away saying, I thought for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. But his servant approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan. According to the word of the man of God, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young body, boy. And he was clean. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. Gracious and loving God, as we come to share the word of hope, the word of grace, the word of freedom, we ask your God for the Holy Spirit to fall fresh upon us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, for Lord, you are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Church of a living God, have you ever had trouble trusting God? I have. God seems to do things quite differently than I would like God to do them. Most of the time, he's not interested in my interpretation of the situation as he can see the big picture. And I can only see what my mind and experience can produce. My faith walk has often been a journey of sometimes second guessing and then de deciding, well, maybe I should obey my God. Trusting God to tell you the truth sometimes seems totally unreasonable. However, Church of a Living God, I can honestly say I have never regretted it never thought for a minute about the times I did put my total faith and my absolute total trust in God's wisdom. I may find myself not alone as many of the Bible characters, if you read your Bible, had this same conflict somewhere in their journey of faith. One of my favorite stories is about Naaman, the commander of the army of the king of Syria. He was an honorable, valid man, but the scriptures tells us that he was a leper in need of healing. Now, leprosy, according to Wikipedia, is primarily a, 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 a disease of the 
peripheral nerves and mucosa of the upper respiratory tract. But it produces skin lesions that are primarily external. Left untreated leprosy can be progressive, causing permanent damage to the skin and the nerve and limbs and even the eye. Now, contrary to folklore, leprosy does not cause body parts to fall off, although they can become numb or diseased because of secondary infections. These occur as a result of the body's defenses being compromised by the primary disease. Now, these secondary infections in turn can result in tissue loss, causing fingers and the toes to become shortened and deformed as cartilage is absorbed back into the body. Now, I know, people of God, that may sound a little grotesque to you, but you see, Naaman was needing a healing that medical science during that time could not provide him. He needed a healing that could only come through the miracle working power of God. So if you read 2 Kings 5, 1 through 19, Naaman was sent to, to Elisha. Now Elisha, the mighty prophet of God, was in Israel and, and he was known to do supernatural healing. He would say heal and it would be done. So the king sent many gestures of exquisite kindness to Elisha. But you see, prophets like Elisha who are settled in their call, they know what God has told them. They know the power within themselves was assured that his work and he would not be swayed by the nice talk and the nice gestures of the warrior Naaman. Naaman arrives at the home of Elisha, but to his total disgust, he's not even greeted by Elisha. There is no state dinner, there is no pomp and circumstance, nothing except. Elisha telling him to go wash in the Jordan seven times. That's all he got. And here he is, this mighty man, this mighty warrior, being treated as if he's nothing. This was insulting to Naaman. But church, when you are really sick, and some of us can say amen to that when you've been really sick on your bed of affliction, when you know that there is nothing that anyone else can do, you go to God and say, heal me. So this is where we find Brother Naaman. He was sick. There wasn't time for him to be prideful. There wasn't time for him to try and, and, and say, well, I'm going to go on back because he didn't come and greet me. So Elisha, instead of coming to the door to greet Naaman, he sent a messenger to him to tell him to go wash in the Jordan seven times. But he said, if you do the washing of seven times, your flesh will be restored and you shall be clean. But the pride of Naaman got in the way because he's like, wait a minute, but you know, the prophet didn't come greet me. A messenger telling me what I'm supposed to do? But the fury Naaman turned the messenger away and, and went away in a rage. His pride was bruised because he expected Elisha to greet him, to lay hands on him and miraculously heal the leprosy. He wanted special treatment. You know, some of us get that way. We want to be number one. In the front, we want to be, have all of everything. He had decided how God should heal a man as important as himself. He was not about to wash in some dirty Jordan River. If you've ever been to Israel or Jerusalem, it is, yes, dirty. It is pretty much mud with a little bit of water to it. Naaman was about to lose his blessing 
when he was entreated by his servant to obey the prophet's words. Naaman repented. Hallelujah, Lord. Naaman repented. The scripture says his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. Wow, can you imagine your, your grandchild and your great-grandchild and the smoothness of their, their newborn skin, the smell of the newness of their skin. This is where Naaman found himself. Isn't our God good? Isn't our God so good? Naaman, encouraged by, by the servant, also began to show the, 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 the love and the respect to Elijah. For you see, he, had, he just wanted nothing to do with Elijah, but, but the, 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 the being cured touched him. Being cured changed him. Because when you've done all you can do, when the doctors have done all they can do, when the medicine's done all they can do, all you have is God. Elijah shows us, church, how not to be too drawn in with being the spotlight in the fight when doing prophetic work. Because you see, Elijah could have just as easily gone and touched him and, and healed him and made him whatever. But Elijah said, no, it's not for me. My light shines so God can get the glory. The prophet Elijah was not mesmerized by political pageantry. He was not frightened by the possibility of political strife. So what if Naaman's going to strike me down? So what if I go to jail? It didn't matter. While King Aram sent a note and material luxuries, Elijah sent a soldier to the water. Go wash seven times as a as a pastor it would be easy to prepare a sermon saying things like Naaman's problem Naaman's pride Naaman plea and Naaman's provision the story could easily be told from the perspective but I have come to appreciate the one line summary of this powerful story if that is to say to understand why Submit and apply. To understand why you're where you are, you have to submit. You have to let go. You have to become vulnerable to God and watch God apply the healing. Watch God apply the transformation. Watch God change you as God needs to. Proverbs 3, 5, and 8 gives us the message succinctly. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Church, that's the tech away from this emotion-packed story that I hope you get on this 4th of July weekend. Trust is about submitting and applying before you understand. You don't understand why you're going through the situation. You don't understand why your child is going through struggles. You don't understand why your relationships are not perfect. You don't understand, but then you submit first. Then God will apply the understanding for you to understand what you need to do. Trust is about laying aside your pride, listening to wise counseling, and receive God's provision, God's way. Sometimes we just have it absolutely, it's got to be this way or, or nothing at all. But that's not how God gives us grace. That's not how God shows us his love. That's not how God heals us and takes care of us. We've got to receive God's provision, God's God necessities, God blessings to us God's way. Trust is developed by submitting to God's word and applying its wisdom. You may not understand why you need to be compliant, complacent, but the result will bring about the answers you desire. God never asks us to obey beyond our own potential. 
He'll never give you more than you can bear. He walks us through every step that produce trust. He is good. He is so good. He's awesome. And he is always on our side. So we thank God for Naaman's healing, a matter of trust. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The prayers of the people. Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn. Grant that we and all people of this land may have the grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, and taught us the prayer that assures us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are very thankful for your continued sharing of gifts, tithes, and offering to your church. We are especially asking as the summer gets busy and travel starts happening that you would be mindful of pledges and um, just giving God back what belongs to God, his portion, and give it with a cheerful heart. Enjoy this time of summer, but we still have ministries that depend upon your pledges to keep us going. So we invite you, if you are not able to uh, come in person, we do have online giving that is very easy to do. Just call the office and we can walk you through how to do that. You can always mail in those precious tithes and offering to us, but we just give you thanks for what you have done and what God has placed on your heart to do now. Our operatory prayer. Mighty God, we have read of the prophets of old and how your power was often made known to them in small gestures or in small voices. We bring our gifts to you this day, confessing that we have often missed or dismissed our miracles because they did not present themselves in dramatic, startling events or grand transformations. Give us eyes that are constantly on the lookout for the small and subtle ways you make your power and presence, love and mercy known to us. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. So if you're sitting on your, on your chair or you're sitting on your sofa, we invite you to stand for our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord, found in the United Methodist Hymnal, page 593. Amen.
Continue to journey forward. I will greet you on the 10th of July as your new pastor, as I have been reappointed back to this wonderful church, and look forward to the ministries that God is going to breathe into us, that's, that's going to grow out of us as people of God. So get ready. We're going to truly put up our sleeves and start working and touching lives all around Washington County, not just West Bend, but Washington County, because God has a purpose for us, Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church. So we thank you for allowing us to come and be with you on this Sunday morning, right before the 4th of July, and we pray God's blessings and traveling grace and mercies and safety and all that you're doing in this beautiful 4th of July weekend. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine on us. Amen. God of fireworks and good works, bless us this day as we go from this place. May our celebrations be joyous and memorable and may our service to others reflect your love and peace. Now unto him who keeps us from falling, unto him who says it's a matter of trust. May his grace rest, rule, and abide and be with you now, his people. And we can say amen. 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 And amen. Amen.